Hello, you guys. What is up? Welcome back to another episode of My Thoughts Exactly. Thank you so much for joining me today. I am so, so happy that you are are here. And I believe if my calculations stand me correct, this is the last episode of October. I cannot believe it. I feel like this year is quite literally flying by because by the time you guys listen to this episode, it'll be, yeah, no, I don't even need to go through it. It's good. This is the last episode of October. What the heck? That's wild. Um, I hope you guys have a very fun and safe Halloween. If you are doing something fun and exciting, I I have some family coming into town this weekend, so I'm not really doing the whole Halloween thing this year. I have no intention of like dressing up. For the past couple years, I really haven't um, for no other reason other than I just, I feel like overwhelmed by it, if I'm being completely honest. Like I love the idea of dressing up, but I always go for like the funnier costumes. Like for the past couple years, I've been inflatable costumes. If you follow me on Instagram, you know this already a couple years ago, I was an inflatable panda and then I was an inflatable penguin. And then if I do dress up, it's going to be an inflatable octopus because my parents sent me a bunch of Halloween decorations from back home and which is also like so nostalgic and sad if you think about it like when your parents like give you decorations from like your childhood because like you're never gonna have that again I can't even think about it but when they sent me those decorations I opened the box and there was an inflatable octopus in there because I remembered like two years ago I was deciding between the octopus and the penguin and I went with the penguin but I do think that the octopus would be great anyways you don't care it does not matter happy Thursday Day. Welcome back to another episode of My Thoughts Exactly, you guys. So for today's episode, as you can tell by the title, we are talking about something that is very important and I think important to talk about. It is a topic that you guys have requested a lot, and that really is the evolution of friendships. And I feel like well, I know for a fact because I recorded them, we have talked a lot about friendships on this podcast. We've talked about them in the sense of how to make friends as an adult. We've talked about them in the sense of how to handle toxic friends, friendship breakups, things of that nature. But I really thought it would be great to kind of encompass all of that into one episode and talk about the evolution of friendships, how friendships evolve throughout our life, how to handle different friendships that come and go in our life and really just kind of blame blanket statement as a whole. And so that's what I wanted to do today. And so I have my notes on what I want to talk to you about. And then I also asked you guys on the My Thoughts Exactly Instagram what the number one piece of advice or thing that you have learned in regards to friendships is and has been. And I will say, I don't think I've ever gotten as many replies as I have on that specific story. So I'm very excited to share all of your guys' tips and tricks as well. So With that being said, let's jump on into it. Now, I do think that, well, how I want to start this really is I want to kind of give you my credentials when it comes to friendships and why I feel like I can talk about this in a way that, you know, I can kind of give my perspective and my advice because I have definitely dealt with my fair share of friendships throughout the years. I'm 26 right now. And as I've grown older and into my mid twenties, I've had, I've had a lot of experience with friendships when it comes to how to make them, how they evolve, how to move past them, how to deal with the toxicity that they can bring all of it. So I want to kind of start from the beginning and bring you to where I am now. So as far as I can remember, as far back as I can remember from the time that I was very, very young, I have always been a very socially awkward person. When I tell people that, they don't believe me because they're like, well, your job is to talk to people. Like you you have a podcast, you talk to people. No, I talk to a camera, okay? I would be so nervous if all of you were sitting here in front of me, but still, you know, it's, it's same but different but from as far back as I can remember I have always 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 been very socially awkward socially uncomfortable and I would be in a group of people who were all talking to each other and I felt like my mouth was like zip tied almost because I felt like I couldn't articulate what I wanted to say I would sit there and like nothing would come out and this started way back in like you know end of middle school early high school I remember I would sit at the lunch table and not say a single word I would 
would, you know, invite friends over to my house just for the off chance that, you know, I wouldn't be invited to theirs. So I would just have things over at my house all the time because I wanted to make friends so badly, but I was so socially awkward in doing so. And I would just sit back and observe other people and watch how they communicated with each other. And I truthfully believe that that is part of the reason that I was so interested in, you know, human behavior as a whole. However, I was noticing that everyone was like freely having fun with no judgment and, you know, they were all having the best time without question. And I felt like there was something wrong with me that I couldn't be that way. And every time I would say something, like no matter what it was, it could be a story, it could be a word, it didn't matter. I would hyper fixate on it, wondering if people were judging me, if they were going to take what I said and twist it, if they were going to talk about me behind my back, you you know, I would always, always, always just overthink in that way. I think that that's probably when my overthinking really started. And like I said, this goes all the way back into middle school and early high school. And I was definitely made out to be the joke of the friend group, so to speak. Um, when I was growing up, I was actually, so I don't, I've definitely talked about this before, but when I was in eighth grade, I believe I started making YouTube videos and not like in 2017, obviously, but I would make them at the time music videos were really popular. I don't know if you guys remember that, but they were super, super popular. You would, you know, record a music video, put the audio over it, cut it up the way it worked, and then you would post it. And that's what I did. And I could not believe the amount of, I, I just, I guess I could have just never prepared myself for the backlash that I received. Like no one could let it go for years. Like no one could let it go. And I was always made out to kind of be the joke. I, it was always, you know, the poking fun. It was the bringing it up and it was, it was constant. And I just, I let it happen because I felt like, you know, even if they were laughing at my expense, like it was still funny, even though it wasn't, I just wanted friends. I really did. And so I just allowed that behavior to continue. And when I was in ninth grade, after my freshman year of high school, I moved it to California. And when I was moving to California, you you know, I had the option. My parents gave me the option. They said that I could move to the school that my brother was going to, you know, which we had friends there. Um, we had people that we knew who we had grown up with that were also attending that school. So they were encouraging me to go to that school because I, you know, I would know people. I would have, you know, point of reference. I would feel more comfortable. But for me, I was dead set in my ways of wanting something completely different. I wanted a fresh start. I did not want to have to deal with anyone who could have possibly known me because I think I was so traumatized from the people that did know me traumatized is a dramatic word, but I was like just so kind of overwhelmed by the behavior of the people that did know me that tied me to this video that I made this like YouTube video back in God knows when. Um, and it, it was deleted, like I think two days afterwards, I did not keep it up for very long because the criticism was insane from the people that knew me. Um, and so I decided that I was going to go to this school where I didn't know anyone. I didn't want to know a single soul. Now for someone who is socially awkward, right? To go into a situation where you know absolutely no one, that is not, it's not a smooth entrance. It's not a smooth transition. And I really didn't understand until I got there how much it was affecting me. I would go into my classrooms, go in and do my thing. And I, you know, I ate lunch in the bathroom. It just would, that was the type of uh, deal that we were dealing with. And it wasn't until I only stayed there for a semester. Fun fact, I went to four high schools <laughs> um, during my four years of high school. So I only stayed there for one semester. And after being there, I moved to a different school. And this was an alternative learning center. It was something that, you know, you go in and you have one on one learning. It's you and the teacher, but you have, you know, classmates, you have people from sixth grade up until 12th grade. And, you know, there aren't a lot of kids there, but there were a few and I thrived in this environment because, okay, first of all, it's important to say that this type of schooling center was pretty much where all of the like quote unquote bad kids went. It was a schooling center where, you know, people from 
oh, I don't know, people who got expelled or suspended or whatever, you know, those types of kids would go to this school. Now for me, I just didn't have friends. So I was like not in that category, but it felt so nice to not feel like I was being judged because it was a judgment-free zone. Everyone that was there, you know, had their own shit. They were dealing with their own thing and I didn't have to worry about it. And everyone was so accepting and kind. And I truly thrived in that environment. And I felt like I had friends. I met amazing people who I loved and it was truly a transformative period for me. And when I finished my first semester of being there, which ended my sophomore year of high school, I remember wanting to go back, but my parents wanted me to go to the school that my brother Jackson was in at the time and they wanted me to do that to just have you know a more typical normal high school experience I fought them tooth and nail on it but ultimately they won that battle and so on my junior year of high school I went to a you know a normal private school and it was very small very clicky and it very much reminded me of my time back in you know all the way up in like uh, freshman year and middle school, that school that I went to my entire life. And so when I got there, you know, it definitely, it definitely gave me a lot of experience when it comes to friendships. I made a lot of different friends. I, you know, also had a lot of different friendship breakups and I had people that I was inseparable with. And then we ended, you know, it was very, it was very much a learning experience when it came to friendships and that carried out into my freshman year of high school. And then I became really great friends with a group of people um, my sophomore year or sorry, my uh, second semester of my freshman year. And I, you know, met a great group of girls. We were inseparable. And then because I went back to California and some shit unraveled, I, you know, we just stopped being friends. And the confession is that, you know, So, well, first of all, so to give you the timeline, that was the timeline of my (laughs) credentials, so to speak. I've experienced lots of different friend groups. I've experienced lots of different, you know, um, instances and experiences and friendship breakups and, you know, how to make friends and lots of different people that I have encountered throughout all of that when it came to friendships. And, you know, I have gone through a lot of friendship breakups. Some were deserved, some were not deserved there were times where I was a, I've been a really shitty friend at times like that is just a true fact and there were also times where other people were bad friends to me and there were times where you know friends and I just slowly drifted apart based on the periods of times that we were at in our lives and you know I truly feel like now like honestly now I am getting to a point where I'm finally starting to find my people and it really is an amazing feeling you know I've always been someone that has cared more about the quality versus the quantity of friends that I have had and that's something that I feel like has helped me a lot because in the beginning when I was talking about you know early high school and all the way up until really the end of high school to me it was always I wanted to have the most friends because I feel like that's really romanticized when you you look in the media and you know movies and tv shows and things like that if you have a lot of friends and like you're popular and like everyone is like you know wants it's just like a romanticized idea but then I feel like once you're in it and once you realize that you can have 20 friends but are they really your friends you know does that make sense like you can have 20 friends or you can have two best friends and I would always take the two best friends I would take the one best friend I would take the no friends over having like 20 acquaintances truthfully and I feel like that's because I've learned and gone through so many different cycles of friendship in my life that have brought me to that point and I think that you know there are things that I wish I could go back and you know alter in terms of like decisions that I've made and things that I've you know done But at the end of the day, I truly feel like I have learned so much and it has made me such a better person, first of all, and such a better friend. And I feel like that evolution and that whole thing really happened probably within the past like four years, I would say, Um, maybe like three 
Yeah, I would say three. Um, and I really do feel now that, first of all, it's something that I really pride myself in is being a great friend because I know what a shitty friend is. Like I know what being a bad friend is. And I feel like for a long time, you know, not to excuse the behavior of being a bad friend, but I always felt like I had my guard up. I always felt like I had to watch out to see, like, I always felt like someone was going to stab me in the back. I always felt like, you know, someone was going to pull the rug out from underneath me. So I would always pull the rug out from underneath them beforehand. I would always always sabotage it, which was a fucked up thing to do. Like just period. It was fucked up. And I think that now, since I know what being a shitty friend is, I truthfully believe that I am such a good friend, like really, really, really like such a good friend. And I think that because of that, I'm able to now give you the tools and information that I have when it comes to friendships. And I can tell you how to be a good friend. I can tell you how to, sh- how to spot a shitty friend. Like I can tell you all of these things. And like, when I say bad friend, like, I feel like I need to clarify, like I was not like a mean girl. Like it was not like that. I just, you know, I, again, like I sabotaged some friendships and people that were really good to me. I've explained this a lot on my YouTube channel. Go watch my past story times and you will understand what I'm talking about if you want some information on that. But yeah, I mean, I, have definitely, you know, been a great friend, been a not so great friend, you know, not an angel in the slightest. So with that being said, I want to relay the things that I have learned when it comes to friendships now that I feel like I really have it locked down. First thing that I have learned, here we go. I call it reason season lesson. And that is that there are some people in your life some friends in your life, just for the the sake of this episode, that are going to come into your life for a reason, a season, or a lesson. Now, the reason may be that you are supposed to be best friends for life. The reason may be that, you know, you guys are going to be like the best of friends. Like that's best case scenario, right? The reason could be that you are going to be the best of friends or they could come in for a season of your life. You can have friends that you have for, you know, six months, a year, two years, you know, for certain chapters of your life who are going to be there to watch you evolve, to watch you be the the person that you are in that chapter. And then once you move on from that chapter, once you move on from that season of life, then you start to drift apart. Then things start to shift a little bit. And that's painful because, you know, when we think about certain chapters of our life, certain seasons of our life, we associate certain people with them. And we just automatically assume that those people are going to follow us into our next season of life. But that's not always the case. And it's a sad reality to think of because when we have our friends, obviously, we love them and we want them to be there through it all. But I do think it's important to note that certain people are only there for a season and that's okay too. You know, it doesn't have to be some big blow up. You know, sometimes it's just you drift apart. Now, the last one is the lesson. There are so many friendships I can tell you that I've had. Honestly, I think all of them that I feel like I have learned so much from and they've truly shaped me into who I am today. And it might not be a lesson that you were expecting to learn or a lesson that you necessarily wanted to learn, but it's a lesson nonetheless. And you will take that lesson and you will apply it to your next friendship and the friendship after that or to your relationship. You know, whatever that lesson is, I think it's applicable in multiple facets of life. And so that's what I mean when I say reason, season, lesson, like you're going to have friends, you're going to have people in your life that are there for a reason, a season and a lesson. And at the end of it, you'll be able to pick out which category they fall into. Okay. The second thing that I have learned is give your energy where energy is deserved. Do not give more than you get. I cannot tell you the amount of times where I have bent over backwards for people who are not willing to even meet me halfway. I will give them a hundred. They will give me like 45%. And because for so long I strived for friendships, I wanted friends so badly, you know, I was doing whatever I could. I would do anything to like have friends before 
before I really realized what the true meaning of like actual friendship meant. You know, it was more quantity at that point. So I would do anything, you know, I would go above and beyond anything they needed. They said jumped, I said how high. And honestly, I was draining myself trying to fill up someone else's cup while mine was like completely empty. And what I've learned through that is that the right people will meet you where you meet them. So you have to give the same energy that you get. Now, I do think it's important to note that obviously in the beginning, you're going to, you know, I'm not talking about in the very early stages where, you know, oh, you feel like you're reaching out more. You're asking to hang out, but they haven't asked to hang out with you. Like that's not necessarily what I'm talking about. I'm talking about when you're already into the friendship and you notice it's a pattern of behavior that you are constantly being the one who is reaching out more, inviting them to things more. You're the one who's caring more. You're the one who's bending over backwards more. It's very obvious and it's very easy to point out. So if you really have to, you know, you shouldn't really have to think about it when it comes to having your energy being matched. If you feel like your energy isn't being matched, it's probably because it's not. But if you feel like it is, then that's great. And that's what you want out of a friendship. You want someone who's going to meet you there and kind of like meet you in the middle when it comes to effort. That's really, really important. Now, the third thing that I have learned and probably one of the most, well, not the most, I think the next one is really important too. They're all really important. I don't know. I think that this one is really important too, but it's important to note that sometimes people drift. As you evolve and elevate your life, it is only natural that things are also going to shift in your life. Life is constantly moving and it's constantly changing. And there are sadly you know, or sadly, sometimes that applies to friendships as well. Sometimes there doesn't need to be some big, bad blowout fight that ends a friendship. And sometimes people just drift. And that's honestly, sometimes even sadder than when you do have those big blowout fights, those big blowout moments. Because when you just drift, it's like, Oh, like it's when you end a relationship on good terms, kind of, and you're like, oh, this is sad, you know, like we're not going to be in each other's lives like we used to be. And when you have that realization, that is sad, but it is okay because you have to remember that when you're doing that, you know, it means that you are evolving. It means that things are changing in life and change, even though it's scary and trust me, I hate change. It is a good thing for the most part. And so when you are drifting apart from friends and you're having that feeling of like, oh, this is sad, like I want them how they were in my life. Just remember that by doing that, you are letting room in for, or you're letting in room for more people who can fill that spot because there will be, there are going to be other people that are going to be able to fill that friendship spot for you. And that leads me into my next thing that I have said, or next thing that I have learned, which is you get to pick your friends. I think that this is one of, I actually think this is probably the most important note out of all of the things that I've learned. And that is you get to pick your friends. We always say, you know, you can't pick your family, you can't pick your family, but you can pick your friends. You get to pick who you allow in your life. You get to pick what energy you want your friends to have. You can pick the dynamic you want. And that's something that's so beautiful about friendships, I feel like, is that you are people who choose each other, just like relationships. Like you are choosing to be in a friendship with this person you are choosing to actively want to maintain a friendship and I think that that's such an amazing amazing thing and so because of that because you get to choose your friendships be picky be picky with who you allow in your life be picky with who you give your energy to you want to be friends with people that you know don't hold you back people who lift you up and people who are your biggest cheerleader I think you know having someone who watches you grow and evolve and you can do the same for them you can be on the sidelines for each other cheering each other on like that's the kind of friendships that are so so special and some that truly like that's what I look for when I look for friendships like I don't need someone who's just going to be like happy go lucky all the time like I want friends with I want to be friends with people who are like gonna go through the thick of it with me but they're also going to like be there with me at the end of the day and like we can be each other's biggest cheerleaders I'm there for them when they're in the thick of it it's like it's just that reciprocated energy that's like so hard to find but when you find it it's just there like I cannot tell you like the friends that I have you know I have amazing friends right now in my life and 
I'm so incredibly grateful for them. And I really do prioritize my friendships now more than anything. And I do want to clarify, like, I feel like I just kind of brushed over the fact, you know, way back when, when I was saying like, oh yeah, like three years ago, like I was still a bad friend. It wasn't that I was a bad friend. It was just that I was in a bad relationship and I chose my boyfriend over my friends. And that was a shitty thing to do. So I just wanted to clarify that because that's been bugging me in the back of my head as I've been reading all of these. I'm like, I don't want you guys to think of like, yeah, anyways, you get it. I was just, you know, not, I didn't have my priorities straight, but I still have a lot of the same friends back then that I do now. And those are the type of friends that I know I'm going to have forever because just as they go through shit and I go through shit, like we're still there for each other at the end of the day. You know, we understand that life happens and things happen. And, you know, I've read a lot of questions from you guys over the past and what would Sav do's and let's talks and whatnot about, you know, friendships and friends who are choosing their partners over their friends and whatnot. And I can tell, I can say from firsthand, like once you get out of that, once you get out of that relationship because more than likely they will you know once they get out of that they're going to realize the mistake that they made because I realized the same mistake as well so I just I wanted to say that because I feel like I just like kind of glazed over the fact that I said that I wasn't the best friend so I just wanted to say that but let's get back to the things that I've learned so yeah be picky with your friendships be be specific like you get to be this is one of the few things in your life where you get to choose you know, who your friends are. And the thing is, is that sometimes they're going to disappoint you. You're going to go through shit with your friends. Sometimes there's going to be friendship breakups. Sometimes you're going to be around toxic friends. And for the longest time, I actually went back and watched my YouTube video that I did back in like 2017, 2018, when I talked about fake friends in preparation for this episode. And, you know, I said in that video that my biggest piece of advice for not dealing with toxic friends and toxic people is just don't do it. And I do think that there is a lot of truth in that. Um, I do understand that it's also a lot harder than that, though. I think that now that I've grown and evolved and, you know, I've gone through a lot of friendships since then. I can understand that, you know, being around someone who's toxic, it's easier said than done to just be like, oh, well, don't do it. It's like, okay, it doesn't work like that. Um, I do think that, you know, when dealing with toxic friends, it's important to recognize it and address it right away. And if nothing changes, cut that off. That's what I would, that's what I would suggest truthfully when it comes to friendships and in that regard. So really, that is a lot of what I have learned when it comes to friendships and how to really approach them and how to understand how they evolve. And I really remind myself of those things when I do go through hurdles with friends, because at the end of the day, that is inevitable, just as, you know, having problems in relationships is inevitable. You know, you have little tiffs, you have little things, but growing through those things together only creates a stronger friendship. I totally can and I do, you know, when I see your guys' messages and DMs talking about, you know, you have a friend and you guys are just drifting apart and it sucks and you don't know what to do. And it's like, I totally, totally understand that just for some context, like as of recently, honestly, um, about last year, I met these two girls here who we became like BFFs, like best, best friends. And over time, it, it was very short. Like the, sh the duration of the friendship between the three of us was very short. Friendships of three are hard to begin with, but the duration of that friendship was, I, I believe like eight months or so. And then we started drifting apart and it was a very difficult thing to grasp because during the time I was like, I, I felt like this was it. I was like, I have found my people. I have found my friends and having to deal with that, you know, drift in friendship and that kind of shift was a hard thing that I wasn't prepared for. And it was something that I didn't think I was going to have to go through. However, the light at the end of the tunnel is, you know, I have now found, you know, I'm still friends with those girls, just not to the capacity that we were. And that's, you know, for reasons of not being my story to tell, but also, you know, through that, I have also now found other friends who I would now consider, you know, my best friend in Nashville. And, you know, you're going to have your people that kind of cycle through. And then when you find your one, it's like, you just know it's just different. It's like almost like they, they have that saying with relationships, like when you know, you know, that's how I feel about a lot of my friendships. It's like when you know, you know, and a lot of times, you know, if you go through shit with friends, like if you go through troubles or if you go through adversity with friendships and you drift apart for some time, I've had friends where we've drifted apart and then now I'm stronger and more close to them than I ever was before. That is a lot of, you know, how it was with some of the friends that I had 
at the end of my high school, you know, duration and high school career. Like now some of the friends that I had in high school, we DM each other every single day, not DM. We voice memo each other every single day. You know, we're constantly keeping each other updated, telling them what's going on in our lives. And like, it's such a great thing because even though we don't live in the same state anymore or even on the same coast, let alone, you know, we still maintain the same, if not even more level of closeness in our friendship. And it's something that I value to the highest degree because what I've learned, as I said, you know, I've been the friend that has, you know, given my attention away from my friends and given it to the relationship I was in, even when that relationship was not serving me well, I have now learned that that is not how I like to operate. And so now I'm almost like doing the complete opposite. Like I give so much of my priority to my friends and, you know, it's just, it's just different. And I totally can respect and appreciate the value of friendship more. And that's just been something that I have been really proud to have evolved into and you know I I totally sympathize with the whole drifting I feel like that is painful friendship breakups suck but I think reminding yourself that there is a light at the end of the tunnel you are going to have greater friends you know I was just talking to a friend the other day who said that you know she was going through some stuff with a friend that she's had since childhood and she was like I just it's wild to me that I feel like I'll never talk to her again like I feel like I'll never you know be able to sit there and like have that same conversation with her I've known her for you know 13 14 15 years and it's just not the same and so you know things can happen at any moment and you know differences can come in between and you know things can hit the fan but I think reminding yourself the importance of first of all you know quality over quantity do you want a bad friend No, you don't. And do you want someone in your life who's bringing you down? No, you don't. It's similar to all the questions we ask ourselves when we talk about, you know, in the talking stages of dating someone and or being in a relationship and it's not going well, you know, and you don't know what to do and you don't know how to get out. It's the same, same stuff. It's the same questions we ask ourselves and it's the same answer. You get to pick your friends. You get to pick who you want beside you. Like you get to pick your circle. And so I just hope that you, you know, first of all, pick wisely and pick people who deserve your friendship and deserve your energy and time. Okay, so now I want to go into all of the things that you guys had to say about friendships. So specifically, I said, what's the biggest tip or piece of advice you've learned from friendships? So let's get into it starting all the way from the bottom first one is if they wanted to they would see that's exactly what we say when we talk about dating like if they wanted to they would it applies here too if a friend wanted to reach out if they wanted to you know give that energy then they would so remind yourself not to drain your cup to fill up someone else's which is what i mentioned just earlier, you know, being able to stop yourself when you feel like you're overcompensating for someone who's not reciprocating that same energy, because you will find a friend who meets you where you deserve to be met. Okay. This one, a friend to everyone is a friend to none. Oh, I have so much to say about this. Okay. A friend to everyone is a friend to none. I completely, completely agree. And that is honestly why I feel like I've created such a small circle now when it comes to like my closest, closest friends. Because again, when you think about quantity, there is no way like it's just not possible that you can be like best friends with like 10 people. It's not possible because someone in those 10, like if you have a friend group of like 10 best friends, someone in those 10, you don't like each other. Someone doesn't like someone, someone doesn't like the other person. And honestly, like when I talk about even my group of three, like my friendship group of three that I just spoke about, like it got really hard at the end because, you know, I have both people talking badly about the other. And I just have to kind of sit there and like remove myself from that. And, you know, I I don't want to be the, you know, you never want to be the person that's like, friends with everyone. I don't want to be that person. And so I think that it's important to really stand your ground and be loyal in your friendships. You know, you don't need to be friends with everyone. Like you will lose friendships along the way if you try to be friends with everyone. It's not the way to go. So that's my tidbit on that. Okay. Next one, do no harm, but take no shit. I feel like I should get that tattooed. I feel like that's amazing. (laughs) I love it. Okay. Next, just because you don't talk or see each other 24 seven doesn't mean they're a fake friend completely. Absolutely. I think that, you know, I have friends like truthfully, one of my best friends, I've had her as my best friend for probably like, when did we meet? 
2017 2016 yeah and she has been my best friend like thick or through thick and thin through all of that time we don't talk every day we've talked maybe like once every three weeks but when we do talk like we pick right back up but like i know at the end of the day like she's my bridesmaid like she's my girl like she is my person we get each other and that's the beauty of friendships like that i do have friends where like we talk every day and that's great too but you know i to have a friend that you can still pick up where you left off after a certain amount of time, I think is really, really special. So I agree with you completely. And don't let anyone make you feel like you're a fake friend for not talking to them every day. Like you're not dating the person, like chill. Okay, next. Ask yourself, do you feel drained or refilled after you spend time with them? Completely, absolutely that is so important. Okay, next. Not every friendship is meant to last forever. Some are just meant to shape you and that's okay. Exactly. Those are the friends that are there for the seasons. Love it. Okay, next one. For me, it would be to have grace with one another because life doesn't stop moving. I think that this is really important because everyone has things that are going on in their lives. We are all moving through life differently. And to be able to be there for someone no matter what, like without judgment and just be like, I support you as a person, no matter what. And like, we don't need to talk every day. We don't need to, you know, like, yeah, we don't need to talk every day. We don't need to do all of that, but I still support you. And I'm still there for you, no matter what, like you have, you know, my support and I'm your biggest cheerleader. And that falls into like the grace category too. Like if they're, if they like snip at you sometime or like they get an attitude or whatever, it's like, I'm going to give you grace because I know that you're going through some shit right now, but also do no harm, but take no shit. You know, there we go. Okay. No argument is worth ending your friendship. Real friends talk it out. See, this is one that I'm going to counter you on because I have experienced arguments with friends where I have completely been like, "Mm." that's that's it like that is it if you're willing to go that low if you're willing to stoop to that level because personally you can call me petty but like I just don't feel like once it surpasses a certain point it's really hard to get back to that and so if if you have like a you know an argument there's difference between like an argument and then like an argument you know what I'm saying? Like there's, there's a difference and we all know the difference. So for me, like if you get to like the argument point and like that to me, I'm like, okay, like I'm good. Thank you. Goodbye. Walking away is, oh, here we go. Okay. Sorry. Walking away is okay. Choosing yourself is okay. Yes. That goes back to this just last one, this one right here. Like if you are going, if you are being disrespected, like consistently, if you are feeling like you are not you know, being supported in the same way that you are supporting someone else. If you feel drained from someone, choose yourself and walk away just as we do with relationships. It's equally as important. Okay. Empathize with people, but do not take their problems as your own. Oh my gosh. Yes. Yes. I have been guilty of this for so long because when I am at the point where like when I'm someone's friend, like I am like there for you, like through thick and thin, like I am there. I am in it with you. Like we are going to figure this out together. That's the type of friend that I am. Like the problem is not so- like we are solving this problem, like together, you and me right here. And so that's the kind of person I am. But I've noticed sometimes that I do need to have a little bit of a barrier and like understand that, you know, the stress that I'm feeling about someone else's problem is like not helping me at all. It's not my problem. If that makes sense. Like I will still be there and I will help you get through it no matter what, like, and I'm there and I'm ride or die and I'm by your side. But at the same time, I'm like, "Mm, okay, I, if I'm getting stressed, like personally, and it's affecting my personal life, that's when I need to, you know, do some introspective thinking. Some people aren't meant to be your friend forever. They could just be a nice moment or season in your life that you need until you grow apart eventually. I think that's a beautiful way to put it. If someone is stupid enough to let you go, be smart enough to walk away. Love you, Sav. I love you too. Next one, how to keep a secret. Yes, yes, that's important. That one was actually from my grandma. So shout out to grandma. Very important to learn how to keep a secret. Some people are only meant in your life for a season, not forever. Yes, possessive friends equals big red flag. It's okay to have a separation and a life outside of them completely. I can't tell you guys how many times I've been in really awkward situations where friends are mad that I have other friends or like if I'm around someone else and they feel like I'm not giving attention to them. It's just a really weird dynamic. And like, we're not in middle school anymore. We're not in high school anymore. Like I'm grown and I'm allowed to be friends with who I want to be friends with. And that's just a matter of fact. 
Okay, next, choose people who will elevate you and support you in all your chapters, but keep you honest. Again, I love that. You guys are so beautiful with your words. I love it. Okay, only true friends stick with you through thick and thin and not get mad at you. Yes, when you go through things that test your friendship and you're able to get out on the other side, again, I think that that is a very true sign of someone who's a true friend. Everything happens for a reason and what's meant to be will be. Yes, not all friendships last. Yes. Okay. That is, I feel like we all had very similar, I feel like we all have very similar takes when it comes to a lot of this, like hearing you guys say many times, you know, about the seasons, you know, friends come into your life for seasons. Don't let someone completely drain you from your friendship. Like we all have very similar outlooks when it comes to this. So I really, I really do love that. And I'm excited to see what you guys have to say about the rest of what we talked about. So definitely let me know in the comments below. But with that being said, you guys, that is all for me today. Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of My Thoughts Exactly. I will be back next week with a brand new one and I hope to see you there. Bye guys. Thank you.